Your life, your news. You're watching Fox 24 News at 530. One person is killed today in an early morning shooting in Springdale. Good evening. I'm Chelsea Helms. Thanks for joining us. In our top story tonight, police say the victim, 19-year-old Javier Nicolas Rodriguez, crashed into a home after he was shot. Fox 24's Katie Davila joins us live in studio with the latest on the homicide investigation. Katie? Yeah, Chelsea, according to Springdale Police, gunshots were reported around 3 a.m. in the 1600 block of Pioneer Street. After crashing his car into the front of a resident's home, Rodriguez was found dead with a gunshot wound. I spoke with one neighbor who says he heard the gunshots and came outside to see the victim's car crashed into the home. Springdale Police have been on the scene all afternoon searching for any evidence. While they still do not have a suspect, Captain Derek Hudson told me law enforcement is working multiple leads and are piecing together the events. They have uncovered more details uh, that they're following up on. It's just um, it's law enforcement sensitive at this point. Captain Hudson also says they don't believe the public is in danger. Springdale police ask anyone that has information to call their criminal investigation division. Stay with us for updates. Live in studio, Katie DeVilla, Fox 24 News. Katie, thank you. New information today about the Trafalgar Road Fire, previously known as the Stump Dump in Bella Vista. The Environmental Protection Agency says that recent air samples did not show elevated concentrations of chemicals of concern in the community. The EPA collected 24-hour air samples from five locations in the community around the Brown Tree Service property on October 1st and November 10th. The agency tested for hundreds of chemicals associated with landfill fires, potentially containing construction debris, household waste, or tires. A state of emergency has been declared in Oklahoma ahead of this weekend's winter storm, and a winter storm watch has been issued for all of northwest Arkansas and parts of the River Valley. With more on what's expected to hit our area, Chief Meteorologist Dan Scoff joins us live from our weather center. Dan. Well, Chelsea, what's expected to hit us has changed like hour by hour, literally, with this system moving in. And the weather system uh, is looking uh, definitely as it's moving in Saturday evening into Sunday morning to make an impact, but maybe not as much of an impact as previously thought. Here's the winter storm watch that's in effect. It goes from midnight Saturday to midnight Sunday. Uh, here's a quick look at the timing on when you can expect all this, and then we'll kind of dive through the totals uh, in the Fox 20 forecast. Temperatures will be above freezing throughout the morning Saturday, so that's going to limit accumulation in a major way. A cold rain throughout most of the day on Saturday in most spots, but there will be a freezing rain and sleet overlap, and then also a little bit of snow late Saturday afternoon into the evening. We'll have the latest on the totals and also a look at what's ahead for the rest of the weekend coming up in your Fox 20 forecast. All right, thanks, Dan. Meanwhile, those preparations are already underway for that severe weather we are projecting. Uh, Northwest Arkansas is no stranger to traffic issues when freezing rain or snow is forecasted, but RDOT is already ahead of the storm to ease those driving conditions. It's important to note here that even though we are out pre-treating, there is nothing that we can do or anybody can do to keep precipitation from forming on the state highway. So it will form and, and, and in places that we have pre-treated. But we will already have a head start in addressing that snow and ice on those highways because we did pre-treat. A highly concentrated salt water brine will be used before precipitation begins and rock salt will be used to treat the roads during the weather. We have a travel alert for you. The Interstate 540 bridge across the Arkansas River in Sebastian and Crawford counties will undergo routine maintenance over the course of the next couple of weeks. Beginning Monday, December 10th, the bridge will alternate lane closures, starting with the outside lane and moving inward. The maintenance will last from the 10th through the 13th and again from the 17th through the 20th. RDOT urges you to be cautious when approaching and traveling through those work zones. Making news around Arkansas, controversy over an event taking place at a state university library. U of A Fort Smith Library is where Drag Queen Storytime will be taking place tomorrow. The post has caused a social media firestorm from some state senators. Caitlin Reardon has the details. I need to big time. By day, Evan Jacobs is a hairdresser. I gotta go to Fort Smith, so I won't be here late. But on weekend nights, he transforms into drag queen Chloe Jacobs, Miss Gay Arkansas 2018. My platform this year is Arkansas Suicide Prevention. As a way to be part of the community in the state he is from, Evan was asked to read books for a drag queen story hour, taking place at the University of Arkansas Fort Smith's library Friday. Kind of a, something fun for them to do and different, and I think they're just trying. 
trying it out to see how it goes. On Tuesday, Arkansas Senator Jason Rapert shared the event on his official Facebook page, along with a message about his disapproval, reading in part, quote, I apologize to the citizens of Arkansas for the ridiculous waste of taxpayer funds by UAFS for promoting this rubbish. I certainly do not support it. Senator Bob Ballinger also speaking in opposition. You know, I, I think it's a, I think it really is a, an effort to desensitize people from, you know, the norms of what, what would be traditional values and ideas that, that frankly, is fundamental to making uh, our our country great. The University of Arkansas at Fort Smith released a statement addressing the controversy saying this event was coordinated by a registered student organization on our campus and no university or taxpayer dollars were used to bring the speaker to the Storytime event. So I don't understand where, where this is all coming from. He agreed to the event to celebrate diversity, tolerance and acceptance and as a way to include those who might not usually be included. We're people too. If it was me as Evan, you'd never hear about this, but as Chloe, you're seeing it. That was our Caitlin Reardon reporting. In a statement, Senator Jason Rapert commented on the event. He said, quote, I have read reports that indicate these events are specifically held to groom young children to embrace LGBTQ lifestyles. The vast majority of people in Arkansas and America disagrees. Looking ahead to this Saturday when the Arkansas Health Insurance Marketplace will be hosting events around our state before the December 8th enrollment deadline. The program provides health insurance plans for people who do not have access to employer-provided insurance and will use the federal enrollment platform on healthcare.gov. Agents and brokers will be on hand at locations throughout the state to provide one-on-one -on -one assistance in Rogers, Springdale, Fort Smith, Van Buren, and Clarksville. For more information on this, head to our website fox24news.tv